Welcome, Mirko. Thank you so much for joining us again. Um, we will be talking about the Las Vegas Grand Prix. For the first time, it happened in the States. And I know that you have a great visualization for us again. So what do you have? Yeah, sure. So I'm going first to show you the analysis. I'm going to analyze the speed trap readings by the speed trap at the end of the main straight in sector three. OK, and in particular, I'm interested into noticing any pattern, OK, concerning the speed values for different drivers, for example. This is because in Las Vegas, uh, as we know, the top speed and in general the straight line speed played a very big role uh, concerning performance. And also it was impacted a lot by the toes and the DRS that happened throughout the race. So um, in general, we are going to see how the different drivers uh, had different values of top speed, whether we can notice a trend concerning the different cars or trends concerning the different driving conditions uh, throughout the race. Yeah, that's that, that looks great already. Uh, but this is this is a graph that is already ready made, right? So this is something that you prepared that you, you brought with you. Um, but I'm curious to actually see how exactly you arrived at that graph, just going from the data to this visualizations. Do you mind showing this to us? Yeah, sure. So I'm going to show you how this visualization is created in Jump. So obviously we are interested into the um, speed trap reading, okay, value. So we have the uh, speed at the speed trap variable, which is the variable we are investigating, okay? So I'm going to just drop it onto the Y label and we see that there was actually a very high variability in top speeds or let's say speeds where the speed trap was located, which is around the point in which the top speed gets highest. But we notice that even though there are very high values, like 350 kilometers per hour, we have also a lot of values which have a significantly and also uh, unexpectedly lower value of speed, like up to a minimum of 67 kilometers per hour, which is not something that you should expect in a racing condition. This is due to the fact that, as we saw, we had safety cars, so cars going very slowly when the speed where the speed trap was located, depending on uh, the conditions of the track. So I'm going to remove the laps for which the um, track conditions were not those of a green flag, which are unrepresentative laps. So I'm going to uh, use the a uh, track status variable, which gives us information about the status of the track on any given lap. Of course, every point is relative to a single lap made by a driver. So I'm just going to consider the points for which the track status is equal to one, because one means that the uh, the truck was ready to go, that there was a green flag, so the drivers pushed as much as possible. However, we still notice that there are some very, uh, let's say, some laps in which the speed at the speed trap was very low, like 222 kilometers per hour, which is much lower than the top speed you would expect from a Formula One car. So I'm going to also add another filter. This one based on the fact that the driver was going into the pits in that lap. Because as we saw, uh, some drivers like Hamilton had a puncture. So even though there was green flag, they were not able to push as much as they wanted to in the remainder of the lap. Some other drivers might have had some damage in the front wing and so on. So I'm going to uh, select the pit in time variable and only keep the points and so the laps in which this variable was absent, because this means that there was no uh, time, uh, let's say there, mm, there was not a specific time required to pit. And so this means that the driver did not pit at all on that specific lap. So we can notice that now the minimum speed is 247, which is probably, which is still pr pretty low, okay? But it might be explained by the fact that in a few laps, the driver actually started breaking a bit sooner than the speed trap itself, which was located fairly um, at the end of the straight we are considering. 
So this is our final distribution we are going to uh, analyze. Yeah, Mirko, so, so you basically, you added two filters. You added the, the track status, uh, excluding everything else but the green flag, which makes sense. And then you also added the uh, uh, pit in filter. Why did you not include the pit out? Because this is usually what affects both parts, usually affect the lap time. Yeah, exactly. In fact, I would have used also the pit out time filter in case I wanted to investigate the uh, lap times. OK, but in this specific case, it is not a useful filter because we are interested into the speed measured at a certain point in the third sector. OK, so yes, the first sector sense. is the one in which the driver goes out of the pits. OK, so it's impacted by that. The second sector maybe for some drivers who decided to go out from the pits uh, and not pushing 100% from the get-go, maybe you would have had a lower uh, top speed, but instead in this third sector, which is already at the very end of that lap, we expect not to have a significant influence of the fact that the driver exited the pits at the very beginning of that lap on the speeds. But we can also check this because, for example, we can uh, consider the pit out time as well. And by selecting all, only the missing values, we notice that the minimum value does not change at all. OK, you can That's you true. only lose some laps which are relative to uh, the bulk of the distribution. So uh, as I said, as I expected, this variable is not useful to uh, remove out layers in this sense. So I'm going to remove it. So that's it. Uh, now we have a single distribution, which is relative to any driver, but we are more interested into uh, noticing the difference between different drivers. So I'm going to drop the driver variable onto the X axis. OK, so now we have a different distribution for each driver. Uh, these points are already insightful, but to make the representation more uh, telling, I'm going to also include by pressing the shift button um, this violin plot, OK, which shows us the shape of the distribution and also the box plots, which tell us some additional metrics like the median or let's say the uh, central 50 percent of the distribution. Then to make this representation even more insightful, I'm going to sort the drivers based on descending values of their speed trap reading. And in particular, I'm going to use as the ordering statistic the median value. So you have that uh, going from Piastri to Zoo, you have that the median value is decreasing. The median value is the one shown at the, let's say, inside the box of each mm. distribution. OK, um, so you cho you, you're choosing the median value. Is there a reason uh, why you're not, for example, choosing a mean distribution? Yeah, uh, there is a reason. Uh, the fact is that the median is much more robust compared mm. to the mean uh, concerning outliers. OK, we notice that even though we did all that filtering, you still have some laps in which the speed is particularly low. OK, even for the driver like Piastri, who had the highest median, uh, let's say, um, speed at the speed trap, he had a very low value uh, once in one of his laps concerning the speed trap reading. So uh, by using the mean, this abnormally low value would really impact the results. But this value is not much representative. So instead, I'm using the median to uh, have a more robust assessment because it's not as much impacted by these outliers. So this is a sort of a trick we are going to use. OK, so uh, this is the final distribution. I'm just going to uh, notice a couple things about this. Um, we have that Piastri was actually, as I said, the driver with the highest median. So his uh, typical lap was the one with the highest um, speed at the speed trap, which is, let's say, something that we did not expect based on qualifying, in which the McLaren was the slowest car uh, at the at the speed trap. This is due to the fact that Piastri was for many laps 
uh, in traffic, okay? So the TOW and the DRS together mm. allowed him to very often reach very high speeds. In fact, we noticed that the driver who had the absolutely highest speed reading at the speed trap was instead Leclerc, okay? Mm. Uh, during his overtakes on uh, Verstappen and Perez. And in fact, the Ferrari was uh, the car, it was one of the cars with the higher uh, top speed in qualifying, which is more representative because you don't have many toes and everyone is using DRS. So the absolutely maximum value, uh, as expected, should belong to a car which has intrinsically lower drag. Well, for example, depending on how the race proceeds, the median top speed value could be relative to a car like Piastri's McLaren, who has more drag, but instead was very often inside the traffic and could use the tow and the DRS more often than other uh, cars. Um, another thing to notice is that two drivers of the same team did not, were not always very close in terms of speed. Like we can compare Perez to uh, Verstappen, okay, which are very distant and consider that, as I said, these drivers are sorted by median. So. Perez, in general, had much higher values of speed at the speed drop compared to Verstappen, even though we, we can notice from some photos that Perez actually had a, a more loaded rear wing, so a more draggy rear wing. So what this tells us is that, okay, the car and the drag of the car mattered in terms of the speed achieved at the end of the street, but what mattered more was the fact that the driver was often in the toe and with DRS versus not having them for most of the race. So this is my summary concerning the effect of, uh, let's say, on concerning the distribution of the speed trap readings per driver. Yeah, thank you so much. This is it was great to see just going from from data to this to this visualization where you just by looking at can actually get some insight uh, into how how the different cars performed and the different characteristics. So thank you for that. Um, we were focusing on the speed trap distribu distribution by driver. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a quick way to look at um, another comparison, another relation, for example, the speed as speed trap uh, to the overall times in sector three, but in particular uh, where the speed trap was located? Yeah, sure. So first I'm going to simplify the representation a little bit. Okay. So we only have these scatter plots. Each point, as I said, represents a single lap. And now instead of looking at the distribution of speed at the speed trap based on driver, we are going to see how the speed trap reading is, uh, uh, let's say, related to the time that that driver took in sector three. So I'm going to drop the sector three uh, time variable on the X axis. So we have this dispersion and we can sort of make sense of how the two are uh, correlated by using a spline which fits uh, through these points. So we have that this regression shows that there was a sort of a, a monotonous a relationship between the time spent in sector three and the corresponding top speed, or let's say speed at the speed trap. And we notice that the lower the speed at the speed trap and the more time that driver needed to complete that specific sector, okay? This is something that um, is not so, let's say, um, it's not something that always happens because we are used to see that when a quicker driver is able to reach the pack in front of them, okay, the traffic or uh, the driver in front of them, their pace gets worse because um, they get slower into the corners, they gain on the straights, but unless the driver is able to overtake, then the pace will become that of the leading car or even worse in case they overheat the tires and due to the dirty air in general. So the fact that we notice that the higher the speed at the speed trap, the lower the um, time spent in sector three, 
tells us that it was, uh, let's say, uh, very easy, okay, or very likely for a driver to overtake the car in front in just a few laps. So the, uh, let's say, top speed gained through the tow and through the DRS uh, led that driver to perform better in that sector. This is due to the fact that, as I said, on that sector, overtaking was doable. It was not too hard, even though it could be challenging in some instances. And that specific sector was made mostly by two long straights connected by just a handful of corners. So uh, that's it. Basically. Yeah, this this is great. So so not only were you able very quickly to create a, uh, a visualization divided by um, by the driver, uh, but also you transitioned really quickly and intuitively to by just dragging and dropping uh, a different parameter, different uh, data set into the onto the x axis, and uh, you, you were able to continue your analysis and 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 gain more. Uh, more information and more insight. So thank you so much again for for your contribution, and I hopefully I'll see you next time as well. Sure. See you, Michael.